my name is Laura Atria. I am the P Pompano Beach's Public Art Program Manager. And today we are taking a look at Pompano Beach's Public Art Program and the artists who create it. We're here with Gregory Durr. He's a multimedia artist and a Pompano Beach Public Art alumni. He currently has art in Pompano Beach located throughout the city. One of his artworks is the Celtic Fish, which was part of Painted Pompano Round 2 School of Art. Another one of his designs is going to be placed on a utility box that's part of the city's utility box wrap project round three. Durr is a South Florida native who graduated from Ringling College of Art and Design. His artwork focuses on varying bodies of work. His interests in imaginated landscapes, classic children's stories, and duality are carefully illustrated by his use of upcycled material. While exploring underlying concepts of existence, his work navigates the viewer through life experiences, stories often narrated through the perspective of curious and unexpected characters. So Greg, can you tell us a little about, bit about your background and what inspired you to get into art? Uh, hi, how you doing? It's been a while since I saw you. Um, so my background in art is probably very similar to yours and a lot of other people that I know who are, you know, artists and that's what they do professionally. Um, I never really did anything else. It was kind of a thing that I didn't think of as a real career until maybe around high school. And even then I still didn't really fully understand the grasp of what that could mean, but it was kind of just what I always did. Um, like as a kid, it was the thing that I was best at. So if I was involved in like a class project, uh, I'd be the art person, I'd be making the poster or whatever. And then eventually it just became something that was synonymous with me to the point where I'd get in trouble in class and my teachers would like take my drawing books. And then one teacher actually got to the point where um, he just let me draw on the desk and then gave me a cleaner. And he's like, just draw with these markers, go crazy. <laughs> so that's pretty much my background. And I'm still coming to grips with what being a you know, a professional visual artist really is. That also has been your inspiration during this quarantine. What uh, pushes you to create during such weird times like right now? I don't know. For me, I, I think it's it's a little bit of both. It's it's hard and easy. And I know that, that that's easy to say, but it's easy to do something when you know it's for a, a job. Like you have an exhibition, so there's a deadline. You got to get the work done by blank. You got to get the submission in by blank. But with this, it's it's fun because I get to work on passion projects and things that I normally wanted and I could plan for something a little bit bigger, right? But it's almost like you're just, the wheels are going around and you're like, is what I'm doing important? So it's it's a little bit of both, you know? It's very different than, because even in the real world making work, you still have to, legitimize your success and you have to think about that and what you're doing so in these times it's it's obviously hard but it's also super relevant I mean more so than ever if somebody can like in my position I can't apply for unemployment uh I'm I was lucky enough to get the stipend because of ash and just various things have fallen into place but it's way more uncertain but that's kind of where it matters you know it's not about how you do things when everything's easy. It's about how you do things when things are their most difficult. It reminds me of when we do calls to artists and a lot of the times, you know, the committee or whoever will be like, well, let's keep it broad, the theme. Let's just tell the artists they can do whatever they want. And I find that is the hardest time to create art because it is just a blank page and you're just like, well, where should I pull from? What side of my mind should this come from? Because you also want to do well. So instead, I find it's easier when you give guidelines, at least say, make it abstract. At least they have a little bit. So when you're stuck inside and there's, there's no definitive way to push yourself, it's just like you're floating in space. And as much fun as it is to be able to just create, like you said, work on your passion projects and get weird with stuff, it, it's still difficult because you wanna create something good and you wanna put things on paper that's not just like mind explosions. So uh, artists are really lucky right now because we are creating work that is going to describe what it was like to be in this pandemic. 
So are you focusing any of your themes on that? In college, I had a whole body of work that was just like apocalyptic dream scenes. So honestly, like, you know, I'm, it wasn't really hard for me to be like, okay, <laughs> this, is, this is how things are now. It was kind of like a weird prediction. Um, but, you know, as with the recycling as well, I think it just makes the themes that I was talking about a little bit more relevant and a little bit more important because um, there, there's this huge focus on, you know, I, I, I have this weird obsession. I wasn't really obsession, but like a, a thing about the end of the world. Like I used to have dreams about like different ways that it could happen, like floods and this and that. And it's always this like fantastical, um, like cataclysmic event, right? But in real life, things like this is what really happened. There's like a poignant statement about us and our egos and how even our end could be this great, beautiful event, you know? And it's, and it's, and it's gonna be something like this. And that maybe is something that I am not thinking about enough in my work. Maybe uh, to me, it's a little bit too much about this fantasy of, you know, us. <laughs> so what are you working on right now? So the passion project thing, um, it's funny, uh, the Bailey uh, contemporary, that's I just uh, sent off a, a proposal for a solo show of mine. And all of that has to do with like what all of my work is about. Like if you know the little girl character um, that I do a bunch, like she's the main character of this book that I've been writing. It's both like a literal book, a literal novel and something that I use in art as just like my you know, conceptual inspiration. So I'll make a painting and it won't be like a narrative. It'll be something about the book, like an underlying concept that is talked about a lot in the book. And maybe main characters will come into it, but it's not necessarily an illustration for the book. So I've been diving into that. What artists do you look to for inspiration? Like for me, Egon Sheila is my end all be all. If I am having a rut, I pull up some photos of, of his work. I, I read about him and it, throws me into an artistic tizzy. So what, what art artists do you like to look at when you feel a need for inspiration? So, oh man, I got a laundry list of inspirations when it comes to just like classical and contemporary art. Uh, I mean, all the historical stuff. I love um, hieroglyphs, which is like the cat stuff. I love um, illuminations, the Book of Kells and manuscripts. That's where all the, my fake Celtic knots come from. Um, then I like, you know, classical Renaissance stuff and, uh, you know, like Flemish painters like Peter Paul Rubens and that, this like super realistic stuff. But then I like to blend that with newer things, you know, like I, I, I've done graffiti and I do these giant murals and graphic design and even something that's not like high art, like mangas and comic books and video games. These are things that are a part of my life. So all these little influences also come into play just as much, if not more, than these classical influences. And I mean, you know me personally, and I, I did the collective thing. And that I'd say influences me more than anything in the world is just you and Shane and TJ and all my buddies and Ben and everybody creating in this environment now. That is kind of, as lame as it sounds like Instagram probably influences some of my favorite artists more than pff, uh, my my greatest influences in art history, which is, I mean, equally as sad as it is cool because of like, you know, we're we're child children of the stuff. We should use it. We shouldn't shun it. So, and then also, um, I just want to kind of close it out here. Uh, I want to say that his artwork, like I said, uh, the Celtic fish is currently up in Pompano Beach. And once everything starts smoothing over and we can move forward with the utility wraps back wraps project. Uh, his design for that will also be located on one of those boxes in this city. Uh, you can see some of his work at our website, www.pbpublicart.com. And Greg, can you also tell us where we can find more information on you? GregoryDurr.com, uh, G-R-E-G-O-R-Y-D-I-R-R.com. Um, Instagram, it's the same thing. I think I'm the only Gregory Durr. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Who knows? <laughs> so thanks everyone and keep tuning in we have many more artists that we will be interviewing have a good one